So we're going to see how to use Laplace transforms to solve a differential equation. We've got a linear second order differential equation, y double prime minus 4y equals 2e to the 3t. Now we've got initial conditions at zero, and the process is that we take the Laplace transform of the differential equation, we then use properties of the Laplace transform, the derivative, to be able to solve for the Laplace transform of y, then take the inverse Laplace transform and get y. So let's start by just taking the Laplace transform of each side. That's going to be the Laplace transform of each side of the differential equation. Remember the linearity property says that you can distribute this L operator to a sum or a difference and you can bring constants that are multiplied outside of it. So we can rewrite this like this. Where we distribute that Laplace transform to the y double prime and the negative 4y. Uh, we can also bring this two out side like that. So far so good. So sometimes you'll have the y prime term, right? In general uh, second order differential equation, you can have y double prime and y prime uh, and y. Um, so there's formulas for taking the Laplace transform of y prime and y double prime. Uh, we don't need the formula for the first derivative. But there it is, right? Notice it includes the initial condition. And notice that it rewrites the derivative in terms of the original function, which is the added benefit of doing all this. Um, we are going to use this other formula, the second derivative one. And this is the general formula that keeps the initial conditions general, arbitrary. Uh, but we have specific values for y of 0 and y prime of 0. So let's put those in. They are given at the beginning of the problem. y of 0 is 1. So we can just get rid of that because it's s times 1. Right? And y prime of 0 is negative 1. And since this is subtracting y prime of 0, we'll just change that to a plus 1, right? plus 1. So that's the way it looks for this specific problem. In general, you have different uh, constants there for your initial conditions. So what does the differential equation look like now? Well, we can replace the second derivative with what we got in the formula. Again, the goal here is that we would be able to solve for L of Y, for the Laplace transform of Y. And you can do that on the left, uh, but on the right, it's better if we go ahead and find the Laplace transform of whatever that right-hand side function is. So how do we find the Laplace transform of function? Well, you can use the formula, but uh, most people find it easiest just to use the table that was given in the book. So you can find a link to that under the readings for E9. Uh, but here is a copy of that table. And so you'd want to find the closest thing in the left column that matches that right-hand side function. Uh, in this case, we have the E to the AT there. So we'd actually use this where A is 3. So we'll have 1 over s minus 3. Right? Now there's a 2 there, so it'll really be 2 over s minus 3. Now we want to solve for the Laplace transform of y. 
L of Y. So, you know, this is a matter of factoring and then dividing. Uh, maybe we should get everything that's not having L of Y in it on the other side first. So, I'm going to subtract 1 and add s to both sides. And I'll get rid of those. Does that seem right? So minus 1 and plus s. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to factor L of y on the left-hand side. So if you were to factor that, you get this. Okay. Now you can solve by dividing. So you're going to get an s squared minus 4 in the denominator here. And I like the way this looks. How about we do plus s minus 1. And let's make that s squared minus 4. There you go. So that is the Laplace transform of y. Now what to do is take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides, we have our solution. <coughs> that can be a challenge, um, because our way of finding the inverse Laplace transform is limited by what shows up over here. So uh, something as complicated as this does not show up on the right column of our table. Right. Um, but some terms may. Um, so for instance, that part might show up there, s minus 1 over s squared minus 4. So that looks very similar to this and this. So it's a matter of kind of manipulating these things until we get something that looks like what's on the right column of that table. Um, and what I can do is I can actually split this fraction up. And then these two pieces do show up as something on that table, I believe. Uh, s over s squared minus 4 would be cosh, um, specifically cosh 2t, right? If b is 2, then that's this. Uh, this one is almost right. You need that b up there to match the square root of what's in the bottom. Again, we've got a 4 there, so we kind of need a 2 there. So we'll use some trickery to get that there. Right? How can we do this? Well, if we put a 2 there, then we need to put, or we can put a constant out front, it doesn't matter. We need that negative 1, right? We can't lose that. And then we'll put a 2 here. So since there's a 2 on the top and bottom, that's the same as just negative 1 over s squared minus 4. The negative 1 has no big deal. That can be brought outside the Laplace or inverse Laplace transform. And this is now cinch 2t, right? So you see how those were able to match up with the hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine. What about that other piece? That looks a little more troubling. 
because it's got an s squared minus 4, but it's also got an s minus 3. Probably not going to see anything that complicated on the list. But these pieces individually in the denominator would be okay denominators. So we'll use partial fraction decomposition to split that up. Everybody remembers partial fraction decomposition, right? Again, we'll just keep this two out here, here, and then we will decompose this into a over s minus three plus b over s squared minus four, right? I mean, the idea is that a over s minus 3 plus b over s squared minus 4 would equal this, right? The 1 over s. So, how do we find a and b? Actually, so we can just make that equal 2, right? We don't need to bring a 2 out here. Does anybody remember that? Well, it's a slide calculation that may be worth revisiting, uh, but you basically just set these equal to each other, right? <coughs> and you say, but you only have one equation and you have two unknowns. How do you solve? So we just clear the fractions and then we match up like terms, which is something we've been doing in other differential equation stuff. Um, so we multiply everything by s minus 3, everything by s squared minus 4. What happens when you do that? So you'll get a times s squared minus 4 plus b times s minus 3 equals 2, right? You clear those denominators by multiplying by the LCD. So let's distribute this to make a little more sense of it. We've got a s squared minus 4 a plus b s minus 3 b plus 2. All right, and so how is this going to work? You need like terms to match up. And they aren't going to match up like this, are they? Because there's no s squared over here, there's no s over there, so that would make you think maybe a and b are zero. Well, that's obviously not the case. Um, mistake was made here, right, where this can't be just a and b. It's got to be s plus 2. Yeah, that's the other thing. I mean, s squared minus 4 is s plus 2, s minus 2. So you might be able to do it as a, b, and c as three separate things. Um, this might be better anyway because of what happened with the s over s squared minus 4. We know there's a nice formula for that. So um, just, well, I guess we had a formula for if it was a constant anyway. Yeah, let's go back to having an s there. That should make things work out. S there. And that makes us have an s here which makes this s squared and makes that an s. So, you know, we've got really we've got three equations here, so it's an overdetermined system, but hopefully things work out. Um, one thing is that the, a, the s squared terms should work out, and that is telling us that a plus b should equal zero. And uh, 
There's no S term over there to balance out. Oh, so I do need I do need something else, don't I? Need a C. All right. Making this as hard as they can. All right, one more time. So we've got BS squared. We've got a negative 3 BS. We will then also have a plus CS and then a minus 3 C. All right, this makes more sense. We did have three equations because we've got three terms, constants, variable, and variable squared. Um, so it only makes sense to have three parameters, A, B, and C. If you look at the square terms, you do have a plus b is 0. If we look at the s terms, where are we at? We get negative 3b plus c equals 0. And if you look at the constants, you get negative 4a minus 3c equals 2. So then we want to solve this system for a, b, and c. Uh, best way to do that is probably to use the first equation and substitute into the other ones to get a system that has two equations and two unknowns. Uh, you notice that this first one tells us that a equals negative b, that they're opposite since they add to zero. So you can replace a with negative b, and that would tell you that this could be rewritten as an equation with b and c, uh, it would be 4b, right? Because of the negative and the negative 4 would cancel. All right. So now we've got a system of two equations and two unknowns. And we can solve that. How do you want to solve that? Substitution, addition. Substitution? Sounds good. All right, so let's solve for C here. C would equal 3B. And we'll substitute that into the other equation. You can also just use software to solve these systems. And this simplifies to tell us what? 4b minus 9b, which is negative 5b, equals 2. So b equals negative 2 fifths. Right? Does that seem right? C equals 3b, 4 minus 9 is negative 5. All right, we can now get C from this. C would then be negative 6 fifths, right? And what is A? A is the opposite of B, right? So, so just 2 fifths, positive. Okay, so everything's got a one-fifth, and we can remember this was our. Original 
set up. Uh, we can go ahead and put that one fifth out front. It's not out front. There we go. And then A can just be a two here. And B would be a negative two. And C would be a negative six. All right, technically we can now take the inverse transform of each of these. Right. Um, the uh, two here is going to be put out front of that, and we'll do the formula here, 1 over s minus a. So that'll go to an exponential. Um, this one will work a lot like that one. You'll just have that uh, negative 2 brought outside. And then this one will work a lot like that one. We need to adjust it, right? So we need a 2 up there. Probably the best way to do that is to make it negative 3 here and positive 2 there. Right? That's still negative 6. Now, you could combine some stuff here. Might be, might have been smarter to do that. Um, you notice that this is essentially the same as this. Those could have been combined as like terms. And this is the same as that. Could have been combined as like terms. Um, let's go ahead and take the inverse Laplace transform. Left side's easy, right? The inverse transform of the transform is the function itself. And we're going to go ahead and put in the one fifth. And then I'm going to have two times the inverse transform of one over s minus three minus two times the inverse transform of s over s squared minus 4 minus, minus 3 times the inverse transform of Two over s squared minus four. And that's actually all the stuff that has the one fifth. Plus, we've got inverse transform of this again. And then we've got. transform of this. That's S. This sort of went off the edge of the document. So we'll continue it down here. Okay, so each one of these should be found in the table. And the first one is 2 fifths. I think it's e to the 3t. Is that right? And this. So s minus a. Um, is e to the at. So that takes care of this part, right? 2 times 1 fifth is 2 fifths, and then that's e to the 3t. All 
right. This one is s over s squared minus 4. That is um, cosh 2t. It also has a 2 fifths. This is going to be negative 3 times cinch 2t. Oh, it's 3 fifths, sorry. Still got that 1 fifth outside. All right, now we're done with the 1 fifth stuff, um, but we're still going to have another uh, cosh of 2t here and negative 1 half cinch of 2t. So it looks like we can combine like terms at the end. Uh, wasn't really a problem. So just to clean things up, we can combine the koshes and the cinches. Let's see, we've got a kosh minus two fifths kosh, which should be positive three fifths. the cinches. Ooh. Fractions with unlike denominators. Negative three-fifths and negative one-half. So that's a negative six-tenths and that's negative five-tenths. So negative eleven-tenths. That seem right? There you go. So it's just that easy to get a solution using the inverse Laplace transform. Um, so the ways of checking this can be done with the standard, take the derivative, put it in the differential equation. Um, but a lot of software packages have Laplace transform features where you can tell it to solve the differential equation using the Laplace transform method. And um, I think in the Laplace transforms with Sage code. We have that. So this is just another another method. There's not like a question to where you have to use Laplace, is there? Right, so a lot of the differential equations in these sections can be solved by other methods. Like this one could have been solved with variation of parameters, or no, method of undetermined coefficients. Um, but the form of the solution usually looks different, even though it's equivalent. So um, this will be one way of doing it. We'll do something like this. Let's see. So I'm not going to let me get a new one until I sign in. quick. Let me use the correct password. So yeah, you would just put in the differential equation and tell it to solve with Laplace transform. So we had a second derivative, I think minus four times the function equal to two times e to the three t. 
And our initial conditions were what? <laughs> one and negative one. So one and negative one. So let's see if that works. No? Yeah. So I've had this kind of issue come up before. It has to do with um, assumptions on the variable. And so sometimes this just doesn't like to solve it with this method. Uh, one and negative one, yeah. But in general, that's how you do it, is replace the differential equation and your initial conditions and tell it to use DE solve Laplace. Um, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, here it did not. But anyway, unless we made a mistake, that's uh, the correct solution there. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, there's another example here that goes through a problem uh, that's a little more complicated. So feel free to look at that.